Hi guys, this is Sadek from Drivebrain.com and in this video, we'll show you various methods through which you could exit the Qualcomm Crash Dump mode on any OnePlus phone. So let's get started. Do note that the process might wipe off all the data from your phone, although you might not be able to take a backup as of now, but still I am letting you know that some of the fixes might result in a data loss. So keep this point in mind. The first fix is using the hardware key combination. If your phone hasn't gone any drastic system change or you haven't done any modification or tweak, then only this fix will work. In this regard, you have to just press and hold the power and volume up key for around 8 to 10 seconds. So let's do that and see if it works out for or not. So press and hold the power and volume up key for around 10 seconds until you hear a vibration. Once you feel the vibration, you may then let go of the keys. Also, you should see the OnePlus logo. As soon as that happens, let go of the keys and see if your phone boots to the OS or not. It will take around 10 to 12 seconds if your phone boots to the OS. Otherwise, your phone will automatically come back to the Qualcomm crash dump mode. So let's verify the same. And in my case, currently I could see that my phone was not able to boot to the OS. So I cannot use this method. This was the only method using which you could save your data. But if this is not working, you will now have to try out the rest of the fixes. Let me just wait for a few more seconds and verify the result. So it will now, I guess, boot back to the crash dump mode itself. But just let me verify once and see out what happens. And as you could see, we are back in the Qualcomm crash dump mode. So let's move ahead with the next fix. Next up, you will now have to boot your phone to fast boot mode and then flash the fast boot ROM and then see if it works for you or not. For that, you will have to press and hold all the three keys, the power, volume up and volume down keys. So press and hold all the three key ones and you will have to press all these three keys for around 8 to 10 seconds until you hear a vibration or feel the vibration and you should also see the fast boot mode logo. Once that happens, let go of the keys and your phone should then boot in into the fast boot mode. So let's just wait for that to happen. So guys, as you could see, we are now inside the fast boot mode. So once you are in the fast boot mode, let's now proceed ahead and try flashing the fast boot ROM. Do keep in mind that at this point in time, the bootloader on your phone should be unlocked. If it is currently locked, then you will have to move ahead with the third fix. This fix will not work for you. In our case, the bootloader is currently locked, unlocked in our phone. So we could try out this fix. So for that, you will have to re refer to my guide and let me show you. Get hold of the fast boot ROM corresponding to your phone from here. So this is the fast boot ROM for your phone. It does not matter whatever Android version is there. Just get hold of that. For some it's Android 13, for some it's Android 11. That's not an issue. Just download the ROM file. Once you have got the ROM file, you will have to extract it anywhere on your PC. And once you have done the extraction, you will get a batch file inside the ROM. For instance, in case of OnePlus 9 Pro, it's install.bat on some other phones. It might be upgrade.bat, update.bat, flash.all. That does not matter. There should be a batch file. Simply double click to launch the batch file. And if your phone is being able to read by the PC in fast boot mode, the flashing will now start or else it will fail. So in my case, I have launched the flash all file and it seems that our phone is our PC is able to read the phone in fast boot mode. So as you could see, the flashing has now started. So in our case, the issue might get rectified, but the major issue lies when the phone boots into the fast boot D mode. In the fast boot mode, the files are easily flashed without any issues. But when the script tries to boot to fast boot D mode, therein lies the most important issue. So I'll show you that as well. Only a couple of files are left and then our phone should not reboot into the fast boot D mode. If now it boots into the fast boot D mode, then the issue has been fixed. On the other hand, if it does not boot into the fast boot D mode, then you will have no choice but to use the MSM download tool. So let me wait for a few seconds and verify the result. So as I have told you, as you could see, my phone was not able to boot to the fast boot D mode. So even the flashing of the firmware did not get the job done. In your case as well, even if the flashing has started, you will have to wait for a few more seconds and wait till the phone boots to the fast boot D mode. Once the phone boots to the fast boot D mode, then there will be no issue and the flashing will go on successfully. But if your phone is not able to boot to the fast boot D mode, then it will once again come back to the Qualcomm crash dump mode. As you could see in my case, as soon as my phone tries to boot into the fast boot D mode, it came back to the Qualcomm crash dump mode and the firmware flashing failed. So if you try to do so once again, 
so let me show you if i once again try to boot to the fast boot mode and for that long press the power and volume up and volume down keys for around 8 to 10 seconds and once that happens let go of the key as soon as you feel the vibration or see the fast boot screen so let's just wait for a few seconds so once again we are in the fast boot d mode this time the slot might have changed if you want you may manually simply check it by using this command so just use the just a minute go to the platform tool folder open a command prompt here and simply trying rebooting your phone to the fast boot d mode so type in fast boot reboot fast boot and hit enter and if your phone boots to the fast boot mode well and good on the other hand if it's not able to boot to the fast boot d mode then there is some issue on your phone and the fast boot method will not work whatsoever in any way whatsoever so let me verify once more and this is the final time that I'm doing this check. So again, my phone is not able to boot to the fast boot D mode. So in my case, I will not be able to flash the firmware via the fast boot mode and get the issue fixed. So now I have no choice but to go ahead with the third fix, which involves flashing the OPS firmware via the MSM tool. So we will now have to start off with this fix. This is the most lendiest and complicated of the three fixes. That is why I've given it at the end, but the most important thing is the fact that it comes with the highest success rate irrespective of the issue. It will definitely fix all the issue, including the crash dump mode as well. So let's now try to rectify this issue via the MSM tool. So you may go to my guide and from my guide, first off, you will have to get hold of the MSM tool for your phone. In my case, it's the OnePlus 9 Pro. And once you have got the MSM tool, let's get started with the process. So let me show you the MSM tool for my phone just a minute so you will have to extract the msm tool and then upon extracting you will get all these files so launch the exe file from here it's the msm tool exe and click on yes and after that it will take a few seconds to load so let's just wait for that to happen and then we'll move ahead with the next step in the login keep it next keep it others and click on next after that, you just click on the start button and it will now wait for the device. And now we have to boot our phone to the EDL mode for the flashing to initiate. So in this regard, your first course of action is to disable the driver's signature enforcement. For that, you may go to my guide and from here, there are quite a few ways of getting this job done. The easiest way of is either by using the CMD command. You may simply use this command in the CMD window. After logging it as an admin, use this command or you may do so via the Windows recovery environment as well. For that, press and hold the shift key. And while holding the shift key, hit the restart button. Then select troubleshoot. Then choose advanced option and then choose startup settings. After that, press the 7 or F7 key to select disable driver signature enforcement. Your PC will now reboot to the OS and the driver signature will be turned off. Once that is done, you will now have to install the Qualcomm HS QSB QD loader drivers. These are also known as the EDL drivers. So I have made a separate video on the same as well. So you could refer to my video and the guide and get this job done. You could try with both the automatic and the manual. First off, try the manual method and it should work in most, uh, most cases. This is the CPU architecture for most of the PCs. It will be a 64 bit architecture. So install the drivers on your PC. Once you have installed the drivers, let's verify the same. So guys, now you will have to boot your phone to EDL mode from the Qualcomm crash dump mode. Regarding this, there are two approaches. You could either power off your phone by long by long pressing the power key and then press and hold the volume up and volume down key for around 8 to 10 seconds and your phone will boot to the EDL mode or you could first boot to fast boot mode from there power off your phone and then use the volume up and volume down keys it's recommended that you use the fast boot method because powering off your phone from this screen might be a, a little bit challenging so first and foremost unplug your phone from the PC and now let's move to the fast boot mode. For that, you will have to press and hold all the three keys as I've shown you. Volume, power, up and power, pa the power, volume, up and volume down keys. So press and hold all these th three keys for around 8 to 10 seconds. And once that happens, your phone should then boot to the fast boot screen. I'll show you that as well. And as you could see, we are inside the fast boot mode. You may not plug in your phone via the USB cable. And now use the volume key to bring up the power off option and press the power key to confirm and with this our phone is now powered off so again i will advise you to unplug your phone if you don't do so 
then the phone might get start charging which we don't want so as of now simply power off your phone and once that happens you will now have to boot your phone to EDL mode so press and hold the volume up and volume down keys and while holding both this key connect your phone to the PC by USB cable let me show you this is the MSM tool as soon as our phone boots to the EDL mode the flashing will start automatically so press and hold the volume up and volume down keys and while holding both this key connect your phone to the PC by USB cable and let's check out the result it will take as you could see the flashing should now get started and you will now let go of the volume volume keys and the flashing has now started so the most important point is to booting your phone to the EDL mode from the Qualcomm crash dump mode in that regard you could take two approaches you will first off have to power off your phone regarding power off your phone you will have to either press and hold the power key for around 8 to 10 seconds but that sometimes might not work so the next approach is to use the power volume up and volume down keys to boot your phone to the fast boot mode and from the fast boot mode you must then power off your phone once the phone is powered off you will then have to press and hold the volume up and volume down keys and while holding both this key connect your phone to the PC by USB cable and as soon as you do so the phone will be booted to the EDL mode and the flashing will start in the MSM tool just make sure to keep the MSM tool started in the backend beforehand if that's well and good then as soon as it reads your phone in the EDL mode it will start the flashing process if you get the Sahara fail communication error message then in that case you will have to long press the power key to power off on your phone and bring your phone back to the Qualcomm crash dump mode once your phone is in the Qualcomm crash dump mode you will once again have to boot your phone to the fast boot mode then power it off and then use both the volume key to boot to the EDL mode and this time around the flashing will now start without any issues moreover right click on the windows icon and select device manager then expand the then you will have to expand the port section and you could see this is our phone which signifies it's in the EDL mode if your phone is not being shown as this and instead it's being shown as something along the line of QHS USB bulk for instance let me show you what I'm talking about so if your phone is being shown as QHS USB bulk with a yellow exclamation or warning sign something like this then it signifies something like this then it signifies that the drivers have not been installed so you will once again have to install the drivers and this time around you may opt for the manual method and manually install the drivers and get the job done in short you will ha have to get this Qualcomm HS QSB QD loader which signifies that the phone is currently in EDL mode and after that the flashing will now start as you could see the flashing has started and it will take around 5 to 6 minutes and the super IMD is the largest file so it will take the maximum amount of time so let's just wait for the flashing to complete so guys as you could see the flashing is now complete and our phone should now boot to the OS do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some additional time frame this is completely normal and nothing to worry about from the subsequent time that will not be the case the entire flashing took around 6 to 8 minutes moreover the bootloader on your phone will now be logged you will once again have to unlock it if you want to for that you will have to boot your phone to fast boot mode and then use the fast boot flashing unlock or the fast boot oem unlock command i have a separate guide and a video on the same you could refer to my video or guide and get this job done anyways let me just show you my phone boot up to the os and then we could round off this video so in the meantime let's discuss the three methods that we had used so the first method is simply by using the power and the volume up key for around 8 to 10 seconds and your phone will boot to the OS this will only happen with those phone if in which all the partitions are up and running without any issues but if that is not the case with you then this fix will not work next up comes the fast boot mode in this you will have to press and hold the power volume up and volume down keys for a few seconds and your phone will then move to the fast boot mode after that you will have to flash the fast boot rom so i've given a link from here you may get hold of the fast boot rom for your phones and once you have got hold of the fast boot rom you may then flash it but as i've shown you in my video all the files in the fast boot mode will be flashed but the files in the fast boot d mode was not able to be flashed because my phone refused to boot to the fast boot d mode if that is the case with you as well then you will once again get the same error message the Qualcomm crash dump error message and you will not be able to flash the firmware in the fast boot mode as well so in that case you are left with no choice but to go with the MSM tool so regarding this you will first and foremost have to launch the MSM tool in the backend after that you will have to install the drivers and turn off the driver signature enforcement as well then install the Qualcomm drivers and 
After that, simply you have to boot your phone to the EDL mode. For that, you could you will have to first and foremost power off your phone. So you could either press and hold the power key for around 10 to 12 seconds, or a much better approach will be to boot your phone to fast boot mode via the power volume up and volume down keys. Press and hold them for around 10 to 12 seconds, and your phone will boot to the fast boot mode. From the fast boot mode, you may then boot to the EDL mode by long press and hold the volume up and volume down keys for around 8 to 10 seconds and then plug in your phone to the PC and your phone will then boot to the EDL mode. So after powering off your phone, just unplug your phone from the PC, then press and hold the volume up and volume down keys for around 10 to 12 seconds and then do a replug in your phone to the PC and as soon as your phone is booted to the EDL mode, the flashing will start. But if you get the Sahara failed message, then close the MSM tool as well and boot your phone back to the Qualcomm crash dump mode. From there, you will again have to boot your phone to the EDL mode and again launch the MSM tool, hit the start button and then boot your phone to the EDL mode. And this time around the flashing will start. It will take around six to eight minutes. And once that is done, you, as you could see, the phone will then boot to the OS. And as I have told you, as of now, the bootloader will be logged and you will have to enable OEM unlocking and then re-enable the, and then re-unlock the bootloader via the fastboot flashing unlock or the fastboot OEM unlock. Just let me show you this as well. It will take only a few seconds. So let me choose the buttons and with this we are inside the OS. So as as of now, let me show you if you boot to the as you might be aware, the MSM tool is only available till Android 11. So your phone will boot to the Oxygen OS 11 only. Anyways, as you could see currently the OEM unlocking toggle is grayed out or turned off. So you will first have to enable it by, by turning on your data, connect to Wi-Fi, give it a few seconds and it will then be enabled and after that you may flash the or rather unlock the bootloader if you required. So guys on that note I round off this video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching.